and welcome to the first ever show of Porrick and Porrick Talk from Anna GDA. I was looking through a few of the county Twitter accounts there last week and I've seen the likes of Cavan, Tyrone, Wexford, even Kyardo all have GDA Live television schedules. So I thought, let's do it from Anna one. Cormac, my co-presenter. Yes, Porrick, very good to be here and um, bring some coverage of the local GAA scene in from Anna. Um, we're glad to have Ryan Jones from Anna. Uh, player here with us today. I'm um, going to be asking Ryan a few questions later on as well. Thanks very much for coming, Ryan. Um, well busy time for you at the minute, I'm sure, from all of county club football starting for you. Oh, yeah, it's um, preparation for the championship at the moment now. Um, I suppose the league's not adjusted. Instead of the division, we didn't get up, but um, we're definitely going to be targeting that next year. Now it's just about the club. The league has already started, and we're actually playing kind of damage tomorrow evening here at uh, Derry Monday. Cheers for that, um, First of all, we look back at last week's Division 1 Division 2 games. There was 9 games played in total, with a total of 16 goals and 164 points over the 9 games. But we start off first and quickly going through Division 1. Aaron Gales 2-5, Tempo 1-9. It was a late game in Kelly Point, Cormac. Indeed, yeah. Tempo uh, looking to have a, a, a good season after last year's sort of... Um, you know, last year we expected a bit more from Tempo. Um, mm. But you know, they've still got the same core players there, you know, Damien Kelly's there, the Fermanagh boys are no longer um, on the Fermanagh panel, the, the Tampa of all them um, have access to all them Fermanagh players at the moment. And Raymond moved the next game, Timor won 10, Derry Gondi won 10, he's left it late. Yeah, no, we uh, probably, to be honest, we were looking to get a draw. Timor had a, a free at the end, and uh, another day on McManus would have put it over, but he was just unlucky. Um, Pete was actually down at our game, I don't know if he would have been too impressed with a couple of us. Um, I know your brother kicked all three, was he pushing closer to Anton? Yeah, Colin, Colin played a lot of it in that game. Um, I'm sure he's, he's uh, up against Richard Calvin and Owen Donnelly, probably at the moment, the two boys slightly ahead of him. But uh, he done well in the last league game against Offaly and he's definitely pushing, he's going well. I'm just looking over the next game, Eddie 12 points, Rossley 13 points. The same thing the game of two halves, Rossley led 11 5 in the first half. So it was a good start to the year in duo of Adrian O'Donnell and Mark Hart in the Ross Lane game. You didn't put a four point spell to 2 14. Not looking too good for Newtown, is it, Cormac? Not at the moment, no, but uh, I'm aware that there was a stag do last weekend and uh, they went for uh, one, of the, one of the top players in the stag do, uh, James Connolly. Right. Um, I'm sure they were missing a few big names there. Baku again, <coughs> looking to push on from last year's uh, push that they made in 2013. Um, and you know they've got uh, Gormley there as manager, he's uh, going well, yeah, experienced guy as well. Running through Division 2 there lads, Canoli 8 points, this is Ski 1-7, that's a massive 2 points for this is Ski Ray, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's a serious result, I was actually um, chatting on the Canoli lads, Rory Cardigan, and uh, he's impressed with this is Ski, Daniel Keel, one of the main forwards, wasn't playing either, but uh, this is Ski and Canoli, they'll be both there, they're about to come promotion and uh, and uh, definitely fancy coming to the back. Just looking at the results, Alton C one eight Irm sound thirteen points, Co two seven, Derry Lynn two eight, Brooker eight points, Benelec two seven, I'm sure Brooker missing Tommy McElroy. And the big one there for McEnna like still in eight points, McGuire's Bridge one thirteen. What a start for Colin Hartley. Great great result for the bridge there, the Gales, you know, they've got a lot of good upcoming young players. They might be too disheartened by that there. Um, the, the, the junior side were out with Derry Gonnie last weekend and also 30 boys out with them. Um, but again, you know, Colin Courtney's good track record. Um, he's managed a few teams now and uh, he's bringing all his experience and work with all with them in the little Irish Bridge team. So that's the reason how much. Dennis and Donna didn't play, but we're moving into now to tomorrow night's games. Ross Letty Moore, that's a, that's a big game, the Shamrocks. Yeah, no. Two serious, uh, serious big teams now. Um, don't know what way that'll go. Um, possibly a draw. Um, Dalton Moore were impressive last week, and obviously we're still the reigning uh, championship winners from last year. So I go for a draw. There he's having lads. He's going for a draw. The way we go through the other games, we want a special guest on every week. Starting night with Ryan Jones. Ryan Bell to earn the to derby game. Yeah, same thing. Um, Any time we play our Gales, we find them a tough team to beat. Um, they've definitely got a couple of wins over us now in the last few years. Balku as well, lots of talent throughout. Um, I think Balku could edge it to their home advantage. Derry going down this Derby game? That's a tough one to call. Oh, no, we'll actually skip that one a little bit. Right, we'll <laughs> that one a bit. Uh, so, Patrick's Dolan, the enemy. We don't know much about Dolan yet, did last week? 
and probably a big factor of being in the wire and meeting with the county there is working across the water so we don't know what's happening around. I'm not too sure if he's home this weekend or not. Uh, Adderley are the champions from the league last year so I would go Adderley and the team not about. And Temple Newtown, dare I say, but if you try to lose again tomorrow, two defeats already, things won't be looking good for Newtown Butler. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, they want to get off the mark probably. Um, Temple are very strong now this year. They'll definitely be bouncing back after not making either final last year now, but um, probably Temple will give home advantage. And quickly up to Division 2, strange enough tomorrow night, every game has a winner versus loser from Phase 1. So there's, there's two big games really stand out there. The Wires Bridge and Canole, and this is Ski Emma Skillen. Come on, going to head on the line and predict them two big games? Um, well, I'd like to see this in Ski, you know, it's at the moment, it's in Skeg. Um, it's a big test for both sides, and, you know, that is the game of the day, I think, in, in Division 2. Um, again, Daryl Lynn versus Adam C. Um, I know Daryl Lynn with a few injuries, uh, Carl Shams out with the uh, Torn Hamstring, apparently. Um, he'll be looking to get, you know, they'll, they'll be missing a few big players. But um, my prediction there would be um, for a Darien and win at home. Right, right. Well, it's each week of the show as well, because Ryan's a special guest, regional national question each. I'll go first. And Ryan, my question to you is, supposing every Fermanagh sport wants to know, can we defeat Antrim in 44 days time? Yeah, no, definitely um, we can do it. Um, so with Bristol Park would be in home advantage. Big factor would be hoping through supporters like yourself, Park will be coming out, getting behind us. Um, that we've started training now for the championship and it's been it's been tough. The young charters very good, but um, Antrim are a quality team as well. I wouldn't go by their division four league champion. They have a lot of quality throughout their team, and even with them three players leaving, it could actually unite them even better. Yeah, I'm thinking that. Ryan, I'd just like to ask you about the influence of uh, Pete McGrath. He's got a lot of pedigree, and um, managers of great caliber. Um, how do you find uh, training and working alongside Pete? Yeah, seeing that uh, Pete's obviously. He's one on our on own wrote down and uh, he knows what it takes. He found him very good now, very professional. Um, he actually has his nephew with him as well, Pete Jr., who's also good and uh, no, so far been very impressed and hoping that they'll be building. And what's the strength and condition side of things? And, you know, how, how's that going for you? Do you much training in the gym yourself for you? I uh, well, trying to get in at two nights a week, uh, weeks, two nights a week, a week of weeks, and um, Neil Carter's in charge of that, but. Um, you bring anything in your shelf you show me anything or two? Uh, possibly, um, maybe a medium belt. That's what we leave it at that, we leave it at that. Folks, it's a bit of all the time, all we have time for. We also have Cabin Lee from Man of the Morning, Breffney Park, goes to Shield semi final. But for that, I want to thank the co presenter, Cormac Lane. Uh, we'd like to thank Park McGurn here as well. <laughs> and the big man himself, Ryan Jones. Um, get out this weekend, support your club. Take care, God bless, good luck.